Hey guys, this is Aaron Clark, and in this video I'm going to walk you through making a six claw setting. And this is the type of setting that you'll see everywhere. Um, we've we've got a couple of examples here of, of how not to do it. And this is the sort of thing that it's, it's quite easy to do wrong. And uh, yeah, you can you can see here that we've got you know these arms. Well, this arm is actually really quite thin, um, and it also sort of bows in a little bit uh, on the sides there. And when you sort of come to the the inside edge, you can sort of see it's, it's sort of really sharpening up, uh, especially down towards that base there. Um, the same sort of thing. It's you know these these uh, these claws are angling in quite a lot. And uh, yeah, in my opinion, that's pretty rubbish. So I will uh, take you through making one up uh, the way I do it, which you know is better. Um, all right. So the first thing we're going to do is think about how wide. Well, I guess the first thing is our gem. So we're going to make it with a gem. And you know, just for example, let's say we're going to call this a six millimeter gem. And I can come over to here into my box edit, and we can see that measures six by six. So all I've done there is I've inserted my block instance, which comes in at one millimeter. That block instance is a a round diamond. Um, and that's part of my template. So whenever I start up, uh, whenever I start up Rhino, it comes in blank like this. But if we have a look at our block manager, you'll actually see I've got a. Uh, I've actually got an extra one there that's not supposed to be there. I can delete him. But uh, that normally sort of comes in with these two gems, one one round and one square. Both of them one millimeter. So when I drop in my one millimeter stone, all I need to do is hold down Shift, click on that little square. And then put in the dimensions of the diamond in this case six millimeters and there we are you can sort of see that six millimeters there um, so let's raise that up a little bit now we're going to put this on a shank which is 2.5 millimeters wide so i want a line i'm just going to draw a line down here now if i right click i'm going to go for a line both sides from zero 2.5 divided by two enter hold down shift to constrain that and we've got a line which is 2.5 millimeters we can bring that gem down uh, and again i'm just going to grab a polyline and i'm just manually drawing out the uh, the profile of the uh, the setting that we want i'm going to offset that uh, now we want the the wall thickness you know, maybe 1.1 millimeters 1.1 Uh, so we've got that. Now we're going to want a hole going right through the middle. So I'm going to actually sort of thin this out as it comes down here. Uh, so I'm just grabbing uh, the uh, I think it's curve curve tool, and let's click here, click about there, and click there. All right, let's grab both of those and just trim off that and join those back up. And again, just a little line across the top there. I'm just sort of seeing how tall we want those claws as well. That's coming up a little bit past the, the table of the gem. All right, so we've got our joined uh, polyline. You can sort of see that's open. Um, if I want, I can close that. There's a command called close open ends. We'll click that. It's called close curve. And now when I'm looking at the how much that girdle goes into the claw, I like to aim in a CAD for about about a quarter of the way in. And so if that's halfway, you can sort of see that biting in about a, about, about a quarter of the way. Okay, and let's just do a revolve. Revolve, start of axis is going to be zero. And let's just go straight up, click. And we want to go full circle. So that's the start there, and that's looking pretty good. So now, how are we going to cut this out? Well, you know, normally you'd start to think, well, let's let's create a little curve here, and we can sort of cut in through this side. Uh, but this is my little trick here. What I like to do is draw a line from the center, straight line. I'm going to offset that. Now, how wide do we want the claws? Well, I want this claw 
uh, again 1.1 millimeters wide. So it's going to be 1.1 thick, 1.1 wide. So let's go 1.1 divided by 2. Do that again on the other side. And now we know from there to there is 1.1 millimeters. Cool. Let's do a polar array. Uh, well, there it is, array polar from the center, which is again zero. Six items, because we want six claws. Cool. And you know what? I'm going to grab those two there. Yep, I'll tell you what. Let's select everything except for those two and delete those out. And I'm just going to uh, trim. Oops. Undo that. I'll tell you what. Let's hide that. Trim. All right, that looks good. Join. Unhide. Okay. Just again, draw a little line to close that up. Now I'm going to hit that with a fillet. Uh, fillet corners is the command. And we'll go with uh, a 0.5 fillet for now. How does that look? Let's make it a little bit more, maybe 0.7. Just round that off a little bit. Okay, we'll join that together. And just extrude that. Pull it up. Pull it down. And something like that. And okay, so what's next? Uh, next, we're going to do a cage edit. Cage edit. Uh, bounding box. Uh, world is fine. Enter. Uh, four points, four points, and four points. And make sure your degree here is three, three, and three. And enter. Enter again. And grab those bottom points. Drag them out a bit. You know, sometimes I like to bring these down a little bit. Okay, looks good to me. And again, let's just do a polar array from zero, six items. And Boolean difference. So now if you look at the claws, nice and parallel walls. And as you look down on them, again, you're keeping sort of that nice, um, nice parallel look. Uh, and you can see they're quite square, really. They're, they're quite, you know, they're kind of hard edges and everything. So uh, we've got this sort of big lip which comes up on the inside, this sort of webbing, which, which you know, actually I quite like in a, a, a six floor setting. Uh, but what we can do is, is fill up the corners. So again, fill it, fill it edge. Uh, let's this time go with a 0.5 millimeter radius. Let's just grab all of those edges. Enter. There it is, like magic. So now we've got some really nice sort of rounded claws there. If you didn't want to go as hard, you can sort of bring that fillet back. So 0.4. If I just hit P, it's going to grab the previous edge selection. And there we are. Easy. Uh, and let's have a look at these little sort of undercuts as well. So let's just grab a curve. Let's bring that up, mirror it across. Join those. Close that. Now, for some reason, my project was off. Let's have a look. Now it's on. And you can see there I've got a, a bent curve. Well, that's pretty bad. Uh, let's go to the front and we're going to project that to the C plane. And I've got uh, I've got my right mouse button set up, so if I hit the right right mouse button, it's going to delete. Uh, it's not going to copy it and project it. It's going to delete it and project it. So if I do that, then I've still only got the one curve. Uh, let's bring that out. I'm going to bring that out and then hold Control, and that's just going to sort of extrude. It's going to extrude it open, but I can just cap that like that. And I'm going to hold Control Shift and sub-select that face, bring it 
down. I'm going to taper that face in like that. Okay, I'm going to show you something cool. Um, so I want to taper, taper this face in. Now if I just bring that in, yeah, that's fine. Okay. Uh, one of the dangers is if you subselect that edge and bring that in, well, what you'll actually get, let's see if I can exaggerate this, what you'll actually get is this weird sort of overlap of that face. You can sort of see that twisting up. Uh, so the trick is not to grab that edge, to grab that whole face and scale that in. All right. And you can probably guess what I'm going to do next. Pole array. Something like that. You just want to have a look at these triangles down here and think, yeah, that's probably getting a bit, yeah, a little bit tight there. So let's bring that down a bit. Uh, you know what, we can sub-select that, we can bring that across to sort of maintain that a bit of that shape there. Polar array. Uh, let's, uh, let's do a boolean difference and see how it looks. Okay. And that's looking pretty good to me. So one of the things to look out for is how big these contact points are as they sit on your, your shank. Um, you know, it's, it's probably ideal if your shank sort of comes up a little bit and sort of contacts a bit more on the, the side of the setting as well. Uh, but you know, that's, that's quite a nice uh, six claw setting. And like I said, we've got our nice uh, parallel walls. They're not tapering in or, or sort of, you know, bowing in and they're not sort of coming up to a, a sharp point on the inside. Uh, you know, you can delete off your little curves and everything there, we don't need those. And of course then the trick is just to save that into a folder called, you know, six core settings or something like that and say, well, you know, this is an 80 point, uh, point eight of a carat diamond um, and this is a setting for it. So let's save that into a separate folder and then we only have to really create this once. Um, and you'll get a, you'll, you'll eventually get a big folder of, of, you know, sort of settings for every single diamond shape and, and size and uh, build up a bit of a library okay guys uh, that's it quick and dirty and hope it helps thanks for watching